Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down Sword Crafters the Expanded Edition, which is a tile drafting game where one to five players are trying to craft the greatest sword ever! And the way it works is, the beginning of each round, and there's six rounds total in the game, a number of sword tiles are going to be put out in a grid. In a two-player game or a three-player game, you get uh, 12, but with four or five players, you'd actually get four more down here for 16 total. And then players take turns slicing and dicing. And basically what that means is the first player picks a row or column or column to divide things. So if I'm the first player, I might go slink and split them up like this. So I've made a split and uh, broken them up into two different groups. And now the other player in a two-player game, Jen, she would have to slice as well. But now she would have to slice on the horizontal. So she could go like this to create four groups or like this to create four groups. And that's a very interesting strategic decision because once the slicing is done, we will take turns grabbing all these groups and starting to build up our... Um, sword. Now, this is the beginning of a sword. This is my sword, and I start out with a green and a yellow gem on a scabbard. Because I've got this yellow gem and this green gem, I want to get more yellow and green. I want to double down on that. And uh, there are no greens out here, but there's certainly yellow. So, you can see I split it up, and I'm hoping these two... Well, I know these two will stay together. Uh, to be a yellow. And Jen knows that, too. So, I think she'll go on ahead and slice shink like this. Because now, um, if I really want those yellows, which she knows I want, that means in the draft, I'm going to end up taking these and only get two tiles. So I end up taking these two to add to my sword. And then she says, -ha -ha -ha, I'll grab this and I'll end up getting three. Three tiles instead. And then I'm left with another. Now, it, with more players, each player only gets to grab one group of tiles each round. But in a two-player game, uh, you get to grab two groups. So I'm left. Do I want a yellow and an orange and the opportunity to hold on to first player next turn? First player is very important. But then I also get this stubby one. Or do I want two purples? Uh, well, that would uh, vary based on the circumstances. But let's say I want these. And let's say Jen ended up taking these. So after it all said and done, I got one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, and she got one, two, three, four, five, six. So hey, everybody came out equal, although not necessarily. We'll come back to that in a second. Anyway, after everybody's gotten their tiles, and with few, with more players, you're going to end up getting fewer tiles than this. You're going to do less building round to round. Uh, in short, in a two-player game, you end up with much longer swords than normal. So now I've got to place these. I want these yellows to all go up and be a contiguous string of yellows because the more adjacent gems of a certain type I can get on a side, the more points I can score. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'll go on ahead and put this blank one over here. And, um, oop, there we go. And let's see, I'll put this orange one over here so it's not adjacent to anything. And then, hey, I get to put a yellow here. Hooray! And, um, but now here's a bummer. I didn't plan as well as I could have because now I got to use these other yellows, say over here, where it doesn't do any good and it prevents me from being able to do a string of greens. And I got to do this yellow, say over here, where it doesn't do any good. So I got a bunch of yellows, but I only got to put two together. And now I've created this other little stubby one over here, this non-contiguous um, one there, and I'm starting to do oranges. So, but I did hold on to first player. While I'm building mine, Jen is taking all these purples and oranges and, and blanks she got and building up her sword. But after all that is said and done, the first player marker uh, will, if nobody took this, will end up changing. But otherwise, I'm going to hold on to first player. And for the next round, a bunch more tiles come out. D, 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 D. And once again, we start slicing and dicing to see who gets what tiles. And so I can see there's more yellows. I definitely want to um, get some more so I can keep on building up there. But now I want an orange so I can build up on that side. And I guess I want a yellow to build up on that side as well. So how am I going to split these? Oh yeah, there's an orange and a yellow. So maybe I go like this. Or maybe I go like this. Um, but although that would end up creating a different problem because then if Jen went like this, um, then there's going to be one player who only gets one and one player who gets six. So that's kind of a dangerous first slice to make. Probably better to go this way and then see which way Jen goes uh, to, to go on ahead and draft. Now, 
The one of the main things you're drafting for is trying to get, you know, like I said, a series of the same color. Because after all is said and done, if on this side of my sword I end up with like say four yellows in a row, it's two points for every adjacent one. That would be eight points. Um, although I can only pick one color per side, so I might get eight points over here, and if I get a bunch of oranges over here, I might get some points off of that. That's the basis of scoring. Plus, there's bonus points to be had for whoever at the end of the game has the longest sword, not caring about um, colors. So not only you're trying to get the right colors, but you're trying to get the biggest grouping of colors so you can have the longest sword at the end of the game. But there are other elements to the scoring as well. Oops, by the way, this should have gone back here. There shouldn't have been this red because this one is always in the draft uh, to see how first player is going to shake out when you split and slice and draft. Now, this is the base of the game, but there are a bunch of modules. In the original Sword Crafter, there was just one module, uh, Magic. But in the Expanded Edition, there are three additional, there's four total modules that you can mix or match. Let's talk about that Magic one first. If you're playing with the Magic module as part of setup, you grab three cards at random. And each of these cards has a basic Sword Magic and an advanced sword magic that's generally harder to pick off. So if we had these two advanced or intermediate sword magics, here's another three ways we can score points at the end of the game. Whoever has the fewest purples scores nine points. Which means, all of a sudden, Jen didn't want to grab all these purples. Um, you know, and if Jen did build with three purples, I just want to make sure I have fewer purples than her by the end of the game. So that's a big game changer. Although on the flip side, it could have been the basic, which is the most purples. And then you want to chase after those purples. But least makes it a, things a bit more interesting. And then, what's this? The most pairs of greens and reds. And by the way, if you're colorblind, never fear. The All the gems have different shapes, so they're easy to identify. Suddenly, with this in the game, reds and greens are more valuable, but only if you can... Um, you know, pair them up at the end. Uh, you know, if you end up with six reds, but only three greens, that might um, not do as well as somebody else who had four and four. So anyway, most pairs of red and green. And this one, the biggest difference. So actually, this kind of works at odds with this. If you're going to have a lot of pair, uh, purples and not really do well, well, hey, biggest difference between purple and green. Have a bunch of purples, don't have any blues, and then subtract the difference, and you might win this, even if you lost on that. Although somebody else who didn't get a lot of purples but gets a lot of blues, so suddenly blues are hugely important, too, to try to score off of that. So this was in the base game, this notion of magic, and every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of mixer-uppers that can really change the way the game plays out and how you value stuff. Tons of variety there, but that's the first original module. Now that module can be joined by other ones, like sword tips. The way this works is, as part of setup, everybody gets two random sword tips, and these become secret objectives that only that player is going for. Uh, like six points for having a side with two oranges and two yellows. Now, these don't have to be adjacent like um, you know the main scoring for quality, it's called. Your quality is based on how many uh, adjacent of a given color you've got. These don't have to be adjacent. They just have to be on the same side for six points or five points. So everybody has these two secret objectives they're trying to do if you're playing with tips. Or you can have Sword Crafter Mastery Cards, which means six big scary monsters are on display. And at the end of every round, after we've put stuff together, if I can show that I can match um, with adjacent gems any of these things, like in a given turn, I end up getting a red here. And then later on, after we build up a bit higher, I have another red. I could, you know, obviously I'm incomplete there, but you get the idea. I can show, hey, at the end of the round, oh, look, I got two reds. I can score this guy for two points. But wouldn't I rather have two oranges and a green next to each other? And, you know, maybe I'm going to start that. Because, uh, oh, oh, I had an orange, but I ended up doing the red. So now I can't do two oranges and a green to chase after this guy. So these are out, and these become little quick intermediate scorings you can do that give you temporary objectives. Although those objectives might work at odds with the other stuff, uh, particularly if you mix and match mastery with tips or with regular magic. But then the fourth one is uh, really cool too. Basically, when you're setting up a board, uh, you know, say in a two or three player game, you end up having these relics which appear in each of the corners. 
And so you might have something like this. And now this makes the draft a lot more interesting because, hey, if I split up like this and I split up like this, do I want, when I'm drafting, do I want these uh, or do I want these relics? This one's pretty obvious. A wild card. That's hugely powerful. If you take this, you then go on ahead and grab whatever color you want and put it in the slot. That can make building a lot easier. Uh, the Sword of Reckoning. Each Sword of Reckoning is worth four points, but only if you have one of each color somewhere on your sword. So that gives you a very specific goal if you get a lot of those. Uh, Swords of Power. It's a set collection. The whoever has the most of these scores six. Whoever has the fewest loses six, etc., etc. And there's actually eight different ones. The Sword of Might and the Sword of Mercy. The Sword of Truth. The Sword Sword of Fire and the Sword of Fury. Each time you play, you pick four of these, mix them all up, and then they keep on going in the corners to create an interesting combination. And you can uh, mix and match these four modules any way you want. The rules seem to suggest you only should do two at a time. Like uh, Magic and Mastery, or Tips and Mastery, or Relics and Tips, or what have you. Um, but this gives so much variety in the expanded edition, because you've got all these different modules you can mix up. In the original version of the game, you just had magic. Now, when all is said and done, at the end of the game, you might end up with a truly glorious sword like this one that I recently built. You can see how it shook out. Hey, uh, for my quality, one, two, three, four, that's eight points right there. That was very nice. And over here, you got, you, I, got, I got these purples way too late. So this is my longest, so there's four points there for my longest on this. One, two, three, that's six points. And then, let's see, my longest here is too, so that's another four points. So, I mean, I, I did well on one side for quality, but what was more important, I mean, we were playing with tips, and I need to have a side that had three blues, a yellow, and a green, and let's see, did I have it? Yes, I did. Three and a yellow and a green. And then my other one was uh, three reds and a blue, which I think I also pulled off just at the last second. I had all these reds and I got a blue right at the end. So you can imagine, as the game goes on and things get tighter and tighter and you're trying to achieve whatever objective you're going to go for, the drafting gets very, very interesting. When you, I mean, you might uh, split things up so that you only end up, you know, you might split on purpose doing something like this, and then um, somebody else goes like this, because you specifically just, I don't care. The, what I needed wasn't there, I need to get this. Why would anybody else take only one tile when they could have six? I'll throw away six tiles to get that one tile, if it's the perfect one that completes the objective I'm going for. And so the way you split these up, it, um, and the draft is very, very interesting, and I will not lie. The toy factor of building a complete sword like this is very, very cool. You really do want to wield this. They're actually fairly uh, sturdy when all is said and done as well. Although the rules say, do not treat this as a real sword. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Now, it's a very, very cool game. I actually enjoy it a lot. I was surprised my wife didn't enjoy it as much. In all honesty, I think it's a psychological thing. She just kind of has a hang-up of the whole entire game being um, devoted to building a weapon of killing. Uh, you know, basically a thing just to kill people. So she kind of was maybe put off a bit by the theme. But if you're not put off by the theme, and you like interesting um, tile drafting, and you like high toy factor of, I have the power! Here's my mighty sword! And tons of variety with the expanded version, with all the different modules you can mix and match. Well, Sword Crafters, the Expanded Edition, might be for you. And that is the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye